kind of, like everyone, coasted through life and, and, and done everything that you're expecting to do. Get a partner, um, you know, settle down, start having children and, and we'd kind of started really moving into the second phase of our lives, me and my wife. Uh, and, and really enjoying what we were trying to create like every married couple does. Um, and then obviously um, the unfortunate thing for me was just as everything seemed to be going well, business, uh, you know, we bought a nice house, having children and, and, and as everything couldn't be going better, unfortunately that was when um, I started sort of having a few issues. I was doing a big project in Exeter and um, I'd started losing a bit of weight which at the time I was kind of thinking well this is alright you know I'm not really doing anything and I'm starting to get into a bit of shape but then that changed to losing too much weight and then getting stomach cramps and loss of appetite and because of the stomach cramps it was lack of sleep just started to genuinely feel poorly and fatigued all the time uh, and um, I tried to put it down to maybe I'm working too hard, maybe I'm working too hard and then trying to do too much at home with the kids to try and prove that I'm not working too hard and to try and keep a good balance. After sort of three months of continually going downhill and and really not knowing what's going on, um, it all come to a head where I ended up having to go to the doctors uh, and they actually called an ambulance to, to, to rush me off to A&E because uh, from all their tests they couldn't work out what was wrong but they realised I was in a lot of pain. I felt like at least I'm in the right place, I'm in hospital, I'm being looked after. If anyone can tell me what the situation is, they'll be able to. Um, and that went on for a couple of weeks uh, and it was put down to pancreatitis. They thought I had a, uh, the pancreas was playing up, so the idea was was to put me on a drip um, and give the pancreas complete rest and not eat anything. And I did actually, in those two weeks whilst I was in the hospital, I did start to improve. And I even thought then, oh, well, that's a bit of luck. You know, at least it's pancreatitis. Um, not a nice thing to have but at least it's not serious and it's something that six months maybe a year with the right diet and with the right sort of advice uh, it's something that I'd get out of it and this was just a little blip it was just something uh, irrelevant on the great scheme of things and then I was allowed out of hospital after two weeks and I, I, I'd um, we decided as a family to go to Cornwall to spend some time together uh, with the two children, with my two children, my wife, and um, who was pregnant at the time, and and try really to get back some quality family time, which is what we'd missed out on because of my work ethic, working so hard, and then sort of being poorly as well so much. But then whilst I was away in Cornwall, unfortunately, I tried to deny it myself and and not accept it, but I'd started being sick again and started getting the cramps and I'd try and dress it up to my wife as, as if I was going to the kitchen just to get a drink or something like that. But, you know, I can't stay in bed tonight, I'm just getting a drink. But I'd be in agony on the front room floor and I didn't want her to see and I didn't want the children to see. But I even think it got to the point now where it was just back and forth. No one really knew what the issue was. They knew that I was poorly, they knew I was losing weight, they knew I was in a lot of pain, but they could never really find the root cause. And I remember my wife coming in to see me one night, and I always tried to sort of come across happy and positive. But I think on that one occasion my wife came in and it just got to the point where I'd had enough. And it's heartbreaking to say, but at that point, at that very moment, I was willing just to give up because I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't see how I was going to get out of this situation. If they couldn't fix me, what, what would I be doing? You know, how am I going to get out of this? And it was ironic that the next day was the day that they actually diagnosed me. They took me into a room and luckily my dad had come down to visit me and um, normally they did the meetings and sat on the end of the bed 
and kind of told me, well, your blood levels seem fine, you know, you're hydrated and, you know, whatever they'd discuss with me. But this particular time, they'd ask me, if you've got anyone to come, anyone coming down, it would be a nice idea because we could have a chat with you in the, in the, um, one of the rooms. And then I realised that, well, it's not going to be good news. It's going to be a little bit more serious than what we initially thought. But, um, so my dad had travelled down and um, it was great to see him because I hadn't seen him for a little while. Um, but it was heartbreaking because he'd come down to see me and then the first thing I do is, brilliant, can you come into this room with me? And that's when we got the diagnosis that even I wasn't expecting. And even to this day, it's still something that mentally will take a while to get over. I sat opposite um, a team of people and they've been incredible throughout. But when they sort of give me the diagnosis, in a weird way, it was a relief. I didn't get upset, I didn't cry, I kind of took it all in. And I think the reason why I found it a relief was because there was there was a reason. Unfortunately, that reason was um, uh, an inoperable cancerous tumour wrapped around my bowel arteries. And um, they said it was terminal. And I sort of listened to the, what their, their explanation of it and how they couldn't really do anything. I kind of said to the doctor, well, when you say terminal, um, what do you mean, you know, is that a year, two years, five years? And then he kind of handed over to the oncologist and said, well, from her experience, they're looking at potentially 12 to 18 months is kind of the life expectancy. Um, but because of the nature of how my health was going at the time, they felt it was best to kind of do pain management and get me home as sooner rather than later to sort of be there for the birth of my daughter and to potentially spend what would looked like to be the last Christmas with my family and I just thought surely there, there, there's got to be something, there, there, there's got to be another way, they, they can't just say at 38 years old, sorry that's it, you're, you're lucky if you can make it past Christmas. My dad and his wife in this room discussing with the specialists about, you know, potentially where I might end up how it might end up sort of going with my health and I went and started sort of sitting and sort of sorting things out and putting things in place for my family. The, the life insurance was obviously an incredible part of that because it not only gave me something that I could potentially feel rest assured that financially I, I was okay and my wife and children would be okay but it, it, it lifted a huge weight off of my shoulders that I wouldn't have to rely on anyone. And it was a godsend really because it gave me the opportunity to, 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 to start looking at other things rather than start working out how I'm going to pay bills, how am I going to, you know, how am I going to afford the mortgage, how am I going to enjoy life and make these memories with the children if I haven't got money. So it gave me a platform to be able to, to put all that stuff away and, and really focus on spending time with family uh, but also looking giving me the time and the ability to kind of look into alternative methods and things like that one woman in particular joyce Joyce Smith, who had been given six weeks, and I looked up to her, and, and that was my inspiration, and that was my light. Amongst all the fog, I looked at this woman and thought, well, that's incredible, she can do it with six weeks. Surely there's a chance with me and my age, and my situation, that I could potentially sort of, you know, prolong my life, uh, make my situation better for my family. And, you know, miracles above miracles, you never know, maybe I could potentially even beat this. And even I was bowled over 
from my oncologist, she always starts the phone call with her, how are you? Um, and I can tell her how well I am, but even I said to her, well, I'm anxious, I'll be honest with you, let's get the results and then I'll tell you how I'm feeling. Um, and she said, it's, it's remarkable, There's, you know, you, you, what seems to be there now is no more than scar tissue. For me, that's something that I don't feel like I've lost anything throughout this journey and I don't think cancer's taken anything away from me. If anything, I think I've gained so much from my journey um, and I've gained the ability to be able to, to truly live. Um, and if I can help other people realise that, um, I think that is a remarkable achievement and a, and a remarkable thing to be able to do to help other people.